So in this module, I want to talk a little bit about the implementation of a solid business plan. I've entitled it, if you look up on the screen, you can see creating and implementing a solid business plan. Developing a business plan is one of the most crucial steps in starting a business. However, a business plan is not a document that you write and put away and go, oh, I started a business, I don't need it anymore. No, a business plan is a living document that will grow, evolve, change. And it's very crucial that you have a business plan for operating a sustainable business, specifically a real estate brokerage. It is not something, I, I speak to people all the time and I'm like, did you start a, a plan? Have you got a plan? And they're like, yeah, I wrote a business plan where the word wrote is a past tense. Yeah, you may have written one, but are you still using it? Are you evolving it? Are you adapting it? Are you changing the goals annually? Are you talking about your recruiting process? Are you talking about your technology growth? Are you talking about your HR growth? Marketing, all of these key components that are inside of your business plan is a the roadmap on how you get to where you want to go. And it's funny, I tell everybody, I said, hey, when you pull out a plan or Google or uh, Waze, you got to put an address of where you want to be. And then you know where you start. And in ways, for example, if you don't know what that is, you're too old. No, <laughs> look it up. It's a, it's an app, Google maps. All right. It gives you several different options and you choose one. Well, without that kind of map, you are going to be destined to probably never get to where you want to be. So lack of a solid operational plan, whether it's formalized or not. Now I put that in there, but I really struggled with these words right here because typically you want it formalized, but at least if you're thinking about it, <laughs> um, prior to it actually happening, you might say, well, it's, it's not formalized. I didn't memorialize it or I didn't write it down, but at least please, have a solid operational plan that has all of the key components because failing to do so is almost always going to be a recipe for disaster. And what's the old slogan that, you know, you've heard so many times and it's kind of getting to be a joke, you know, failure to plan is a plan for failure. Well, guess what? There's a reason that statement exists. So just as some personal notes, remember when you're creating that plan, <coughs> excuse me, most people start out with why I want to start a brokerage. And typically most people start a brokerage for three reasons. They want more money, i.e. no splits. They believe that whatever or whoever they're working for, I can do it better. And then there's the third type is I want to be the entrepreneur and want to own a business. Now we've mentioned the book E-Myth once before by Michael Gerber. Please uh, take a look at those if you're still er in the early phases, all right? There are seven steps to creating that business plan. Uh, one is you wanna develop that mission and vision statement. It should call out clearly your purpose and your value proposition. What do you bring? What can you do better? What are you going to do different? Um, I get a lot of agents that come to me and say they want to start a business and they want to list bank owned homes. And I say, that's cool. That's a good goal. However, there's about 20 that I can name off the top of my head and they've been doing it 10, 15, 20 years. What are you going to do better or differently than that person's doing currently? And that's something you need to think about. There's this thing called a SWOT analysis, a strength, weakness, opportunity, uh, and 
lost the last one. <laughs> Basically, it's analysis of the assessment of your business and the landscape of the industry, meaning exactly what I just said. Um, if you're going to do this niche, is there somebody already in the niche? What are they doing? How are you going to do it better? Knowing what you're up against, how how can you out compete them? You know, if you're going to compete against somebody who is already in this niche and has been doing it for 10 or 15, 20 years, they have probably got all the pieces in place. They've got all the connections made. They are already in with the group of people. How are you going to do this? Um, setting specific goals, consider short-term, one-year goals, six-month goals, as well as long-term, three-year, five-year, 10-year goal. You need to separate your sales goals as an agent differently than what you are going to do, your business goals, all right? If you are a broker and you are actually still practicing brokerage, you may have a set of goals for you as the broker to close four deals a month, all right? As a company, you may have recruit five new agents this year. So understand that you may have two goals and you really need to make these goals specific and we can do a whole class just on this, right? You know what I'm talking about? Because you don't, you want to say goals that can be measurable. I want to attain a million dollars in sales. You don't want to have a goal of, I want to sell a lot. Uh, because there is no definition of a lot. You don't know how to get there. But a million dollars, you could say, well, I was two houses short. Or I hit that sales goal in the first nine months. You need to develop a strategic plan. Have a plan in place that will help you achieve these goals. I mean, say I'm going to sell four homes a month. That's a good goal, but what's the plan to get there? I'm going to implement drip campaign marketing. I'm going to create a content marketing YouTube channel. These are all plans on how you get to those goals. All right. Um, Consider your time frame. You know, it's good to say, well, I want to have 20 agents tomorrow. Probably not realistic. Or vice versa. I want to have five agents in the next five years. That's certainly an acceptable goal in your opinion. I mean, in your scenario. I don't want to say that's not right. But I would assume that that's probably a little lax. You know, I want to recruit five more agents in the next five years. Um, but make sure the time frame kind of fits with the goal. Because the one thing that you could do is if you're over exuberant, say, I want to recruit 50 agents by the end of the week. And the end of the week gets here and you've got one. That is so far removed from what you have in your head as a goal that you might go, well, screw this business. I ain't doing it and stop. So make sure that when you write the goals and the timeline, along with the plan of implementation, that those timelines kind of fit. All right. In your uh, business plan, you probably ought to talk about a target audience. Are you a niche real estate agent? In my opinion, I am here to tell you now, one of the largest mistakes that I see new agents make is the fact that they try to become a prostitute for everybody. All right. Now, I'm, I apologize for that graphic mindset, but that's about all I can think about. Yes, I'll do that. Oh, I'll do that. Yes, I can list that. Oh, I'll, I'll list that. That is... Great at the beginning in an agent's mind because they believe that I've got a license, I can do that, and I need money. So they are afraid to turn stuff down. I believe, my opinion, that that is probably a very detrimental mindset. That mindset also exists with brokerages that I see brokerages go, oh yes, we list 
golf course homes, and we also do uh, lakefront homes, and we have a list hunting land. And oh, and by the way, we like million dollar properties with 13,000 square foot homes. Now, that's a good problem. Now, it's not entirely a problem in a brokerage because you might have a guy or girl that does farmland and you may have another person that does million dollar homes. So that niche market is not as constraining inside of brokerage because we have multiple people. But as an agent, it becomes very constraining. Most agents think it's, what's the word I want to look for? It's freeing. Oh, I can do it all. So therefore I'm free to move about and jump from property to property. When in reality, I think it's detrimental. Are you going to specialize in investment properties, South side properties, uh, million dollar homes, golf course homes, condos, uh, those kind of issues that you should define that target market. Also, one of the things a business plan needs to talk about is the systems and the processes that you are going to use, including the evolution of those systems and processes. One of the things that I was just mentioning is, hey, I want to have a goal to go from just me to 10 agents at the end of the year. That's a, certainly a realistic goal. It's very specific. You name the number of agents. The plan, which we didn't talk about, might be I'm going to, uh, every agent I have a closing with, I'm going to invite to lunch and, and ask them, okay, there's my plan. But do you think about all of the other things that are going to go with that growth? How am I going to track earnest money with these other 10 agents that are working for me? How am I going to have internal conversations? Are we going to use Slack? Am I going to call them every time? Am, are we just going to use plain straight email? Am I going to create a text group? Any of those are uh, fine. You just kind of need to understand where that growth is going to go to facilitate that plan. What about how am I writing? Am I going to write them a check every time they close? Am I going to use an ACH direct deposit? Am I going to load money on a preloaded Visa card? Which, by the way, I know a brokerage that does that. So all of those ancillary things that most people don't think about, they say, oh, I want to get 10 more agents. Cool plan, dude. Like it. I'm all about it. What are the systems and processes that you're going to use to help you do that? All right. So that's just a little insight on the business plan and you need to make sure that it's current and don't just write the business plan and start your business and set your plan aside and go, okay, now I'm up and running. I don't need that anymore. No, you most certainly do. You might even write a second business plan. You might go back and tweak your business plan. You may go back and say, well, why haven't I recruited 10 agents? Pull your plan out and go, oh, dummy me, my plan was to talk to agents I've closed deals with. I have forgot about that and haven't talked to one of them. So I haven't even been following my plan. So it's very important that you use that plan, not just for that one initial startup, but it's also important that you use that plan for the operational portion all the way until through that status quo phase, through that growth phase, even through that exit phase, you may have an exit phase inside of your business plan. I know plenty of business owners now in the technology field where their ultimate exit strategy is an IPO or a sale. They are building stuff with the intent that we are going to build this, grow it five or 10 times, offload it to a big company, get a big payout and move on to another aspect of my life. That could be part of your plan. So just make sure that you're keeping track 
of what you're doing and where your plan's at and, and adapt your plan. There's nothing wrong that says you can't pivot and change the plan, all right? Things come up. <laughs> if you don't believe that, look at COVID. Stuff comes up, dude. You may have had the most solid business plan in the world, and I guarantee you didn't have a plan for a worldwide pandemic. Apple didn't have a plan for a worldwide pandemic. They had to change everything almost on a fl uh, moment's notice because that was never part of the plan. So stuff happens. You may have to alter it. All right. Any questions? Great. If you have questions out there, you guys can talk to me after this short break. If you're at home, uh, email me at raymond at realuniversity.com.